After watching this week's Raw, I've come to this conclusion that Vince McMahon does have a plan. He has one mission left in life, and that is he's going to kill what he created. I firmly am starting to believe now that Vince McMahon wants to take the WWE to the grave with him, legitimately kill the company as he slowly dies. And I truly mean that. Because there's no way in the bluest of blue fucks you could look at this week's show and say that anybody of good sound mind, body, whatever the case might be, would actually want to re legitimately write and put together and produce this type of show to produce any type of good result whatsoever. You have to know going in what it's going to be. You have to know going in what the outcome is going to be. And that makes me start to wonder if that's the plan all along. I'm just wondering. Like, let's look at what actually happened on this week's show. I mean, before we even get to the opening video package, it's Kane talking on the phone with Stephanie and Triple H. We're kicking off Raw in 2015 with Kane. Again, I will emphasize, we're kicking off the show with Kane. That's how you're going to suck people in, is by showcasing Kane. That's how you start off the show. And then you follow that up with a promo segment where you've given Randy Orton a microphone. Because that's always a great formula for success. So in the first 10 minutes or so of the show, you've got Kane talking to Stephanie and Triple H on the phone, and you've got Randy Orton with a live mic in his hands. That instantly spells disaster, and it's all downhill from there. Then you throw Orton and Ambrose into a freaking tag match against the New Day, where Orton and Ambrose have a tag match at the pay-per-view. So we're trying to tease animosity between the two, and an uncertainty between whether or not these two guys could coexist at the pay-per-view Sunday or that Sunday for whatever the fuck reason, whatever the hell Hello Cell is, I think it's next Sunday, whatever the fuck, who cares? The New Day wins in a pointless tag match, one of many of the night. Then you get some stupid-ass Divas match with Nikki Bella and whoever the fuck she owes. Oh, she was wrestling Naomi. And of course Nikki Bella's going to win and not a fuck was given. And then, of course, don't forget about the stupid-ass Paige segment where she's pulling payday bars, or whatever the fuck it was, out of Byron Saxton's pocket, blowing some type of kiss at it, looking at it, and saying, Yeah, look at me. I am an entitled bitch that likes to complain about everything and hasn't accomplished shit. Bitch. Oh, and then the genius of how are we going to utilize Stephanie and Triple H in a role, in a capacity that could actually help the audience for this week's show. Hmm, I don't know. Let's do multiple dumb dick phone conversation segments where they don't actually appear in person and they seem to be ribbing on something in the real world that happened with paid. Who, who, who writes this shit? Legitimately, if you were thinking of crappy ways to utilize big names, this would be at the top of the list. Like, even TNA couldn't screw this up this bad. That's how intentionally bad... Raw has gone. And that's how intentionally bad Vince and Kevin Dunn are trying to make it. They're like, oh, Stephanie Triple H, you've got your eyes on the prize. You want to take over? <laughs> Let's see what you've got left to work with. I legitimately think Kevin Dunn and Vince are conspiring to kill this product. So that way they can turn it over to Stephanie and Triple H and say, ha, 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 motherfucker. Good luck to you. And Kevin Dunn's going to go retire in a field of carrots and whatever the Fuck, buck two bunnies fucking do. Now you got multiple video packages hyping up this Lesnar Taker Hell in a Cell match at Hell in a Cell, so of course these guys can't be bothered to actually show up. This is your main event for your special event at the end of the month that in theory you're asking over a million plus people to have been able to justify their monthly WWE Network subscription price to be able to watch this, and you can't even bother to give these guys in person. Or, of course, then when you do, you do the same old shit with Lester and him in any fucking way. So what the hell is the difference? Instead of doing something interesting with the Dudley boys, who could give you a little bit of life at a time where you so desperately badly need it, you feature them just like everybody fucking else, and instead of doing something between them and the Ascension where the Ascension could actually have a chance to get over and doing something interesting and compelling with your lame-ass tag team division, you just throw out a quick, basically, jobber squash match. That accomplishes nothing. You've got some international tag match. Oh, look, it's Sheamus. It's Wade Barrett. It's Neville. It's Cesaro. 
four guys that should be more, four guys that you could do more with, so of course four guys that you waste and spin the wheels with this stupid-ass fucking tag match. Yet another fucking match, and yet another stupid match at that, that really serves no purpose and accomplishes absolutely nothing. Somebody decided that they were going to give Roman Reigns plenty of time to talk on the microphone, but not talk about anything interesting or compelling. We're just going to have him talk for several months and remind everybody of what has already fucking happened. It's a live-action video recap package with Roman Reigns boring the bricks off of people in the audience. The fuck comes up with this? And then we're going to decide to book him in a singles match against Braun Strowman because we just can't wait. We've got to have everybody wrestle every fucking week. And then we sit there and undercut the legitimacy of this fucking monster who sucks anyways in Strowman, my uncle Udo on fucking steroids, by having Roman Reigns super punch him. You know, part of the whole appeal of a giant being booked like a giant is that the dude is unstoppable, that the dude can't be knocked down, that the dude can't be stopped. You know, immovable object type of bullshit. Maybe you build up Reigns as the irresistible force. No, instead, bam! Let Superman punch every fucking buddy. Who books this shit? And then we get to this whole crap involving Rusev. And this just epitomizes what I've talked about for the past few years with the WWE on so many different levels. That there's no reason to get interested. There's no reason for people to watch because nothing they do has any consequence, any meaning, any significance, any purpose. Absolutely nothing is fucking accomplished. Nothing happens. Nothing progresses. Nothing changes. It ultimately is one big fucking waste of time. Now, how stupid would anybody feel of actually getting interested in this Rusev, Summer Rae, Lana, Dolph Ziggler, you know, fucking square-ass bullshit just to see how this finished? So Rusev and Lana get engaged in real life. So apparently that's pissed off Vince to the degree where he decides he's going to fuck with Rusev. Fuck any storyline integrity. Again, how you know Vince clearly wrote this show. Now we're just flat out going there. And for no storyline sense whatsoever, Rusev and Lana are married in a TV set, you know, engaged in a TV sense as well. Real life being separate. What the fuck are you doing? So that way you got Summer Rae coming off as the face. Who the fuck does this? Just a couple weeks ago, she was sneaking into Dolph Ziggler's locker room. And now Summer Rae is supposed to be the fucking baby face here? And the dipshits in the crowd are fucking popping for this? Yes, I understand. You probably have some fantasy about, I could be the one to give Lana such a great life. Oh, we could watch Lucha Underground and ring about her all day long. <laughs> well, get over it. Lana and her pantsuits don't fucking want you, or dumb dick denim cutoffs. They don't fucking want you. This shit was horrendous. And then you have them job out the fucking Ryback in no time at all. It's one thing if you would have done what the fuck I said you should have done, which was build up Rusev at WrestleMania, and then you have Ryback come out and squash him. That is something that could really be something. That's something that could have significance. Not having him job out to Ryback like a fucking bitch in like two minutes. Who the fuck books this shit? Oh, then of course, we get to the epic waste of time that is the epitome of everything that involves John Cena because everything involving him is a fucking waste of time. No matter how many idiots try to justify his position at the top, even though he's nothing more than the corporate prop, no matter how many idiots still try to maintain that he's some type of big-time star. Have you looked at the fucking ratings? What part of this asshole not being a top star do you not understand? No matter how many people try to sit there and say his in-ring work is good when it is complete and total shit, the next time a Cena match tells a story, frankly, is the first time a Cena match is going to tell a fucking story over the past I don't know how many goddamn years. Here's another waste of time open challenge. It's Dolph Ziggler. It's John Cena. You could be awesome. A circle jerk of stupid fuck. LOL, Cena wins. Same old shit next. Kevin Owens gets more time versus Callisto. Then Rusev did versus fucking Ryback. Brie Bella is beating fucking, what, Charlotte? With the drop kick of doom. Again, I'm going to emphasize this. For all the wonderful shit some of these girls can do from an athletic standpoint, Brie Bella is beating somebody with a fucking drop kick. And last time I checked, if it was Charlotte, that would make mean that she just beat the Divas Champion with a fucking drop kick. And all the while, earlier in the night, the fans are chanting for Sasha, Sasha clearly being the most talented. So, of course, Vince McMahon trying to intentionally sabotage and ruin his product by injecting it with a poison. A lethal dose of poison. Vincent K. McMahon decides, no, fuck you. You're going to have the Bella Twins go over in their fucking matches. 
Nikki winning hers, and Brie winning with the dropkick of fucking doom. <coughs> and then we get to the main event. It's not corporate Kane versus Seth Rollins, because anybody would give a fuck about that. No, 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 no. We're still going off of the split, split personality, stupid fuck Kane. We're going to have Demon Kane versus Seth Rollins in a lumberjack match and have Kane go over because that's bound to be good for business. No surprise that the ratings for this show started off at suck and the viewership numbers only continued to decline throughout the three plus hours of the night. Is it any fucking wonder? I mean, look at what happened. You had a show that prominently featured Kane. Like, prominently. He's the first thing you see. He's the last thing you see. He goes over the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Lesnar and Taker aren't there. We're supposed to care about Hell in a Cell when the two guys wrestling in what will clearly be the main event of the show can't be bothered enough to show up again. You can't video package your way into this being interesting, damn it. You have multiple lame-ass promos. Again, somebody gave Randy Orton a live microphone to kick off the show. And then decided later on in the night that it would be a great idea to give Roman Reigns a live microphone to do a live-action video package recap type promo segment. We got absolutely no payoff to any fucking thing at all when it comes to Rusev and that long fucking story that had no real art to it, had no real purpose, ultimately was exactly what I say it always is with anything involving this company, an absolute fucking waste of time. And oh, by the way, ten fucking lame-ass matches... Two waste of time Divas matches, a total of four goddamn tag team matches, a U.S. Open challenge, where of course you know the result because it's fucking Cena, and instead of building up anybody else, instead of doing anything else, instead of doing anything original or creative or different, it's LOL Cena wins. Up yours, motherfucker! We're going to ride this guy to the point nines. Not the one point nines. They're going to ride him to the point nine, maybe. At some point in time. It's coming. It's coming. And ultimately, we have Kane winning in the main event over the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. We've sprinkled in some stupid-ass shit involving Triple H and Stephanie. If you seriously watch this product and find yourself even the least bit entertained, then you, you should ask yourself, how low have your standards gotten? I mean, it's not even about not asking for much. You're not asking for anything at all. At no point in time, in no way, shape, or form, did this resemble anything close to a good professional wrestling show. At no time, in no way, shape, or form, did this resemble anything close to even being a captivating, even mildly interesting form of sports entertainment. This was horrible sports entertainment and bad professional wrestling, which is so much of what WWE has been in 2015. You're going to look back years from now at this year, and you thought some of the other years were bad, like 2010 was terrible, and it was. You look back on years like 1996 and terrible, and they were. This is going to go down as easily one of the worst, if not the worst years in the history of the WWE. Beyond question. I mean, this, this fucking company can't get right. And I legitimately think that's because Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn don't want to get right. Kevin Dunn's pissed because he's never going to get the company in his own hands because he's not a man. So at the end of the day, he's going to do everything he can to sabotage the future of the company because at some point in time, he's not going to give a fuck anyways. He's comfortable in his position as long as he wants it. And afterwards, it could be the ultimate F you goodbye to Stephanie and Triple H. And I personally think Vince McMahon is still pissed that his son never left the damn company because even though he was grooming Triple H and Stephanie to take over and that's what he wanted to take it over, at the end of the day, I think he really wanted Shane to take over. And as a result... He's intentionally trying to take this company to the fucking grave with him and say, good luck to you, Stephanie and Triple H. You know, when it gets to the point of where I'm taking it, I'm not going to care any fucking more. So good luck to you. And knowing those two assets at that point in time, they're most certainly not going to be in a position to be able to save this shit. I mean, this is just bad. You're better off at this point in time reading the results on one of the dirt sheets watching a couple of the clips on YouTube. Maybe if you're watching the baseball playoffs, go Cubs! You flip during a commercial for two minutes and you go right back. I promise you, you'll save yourself a lot of heartache, a lot of time, and a lot of boredom. Because Vince McMahon is trying to kill what he created. 
And by God, he's doing a magnificent job of it.